Hello and welcome to Rhino's Ravens Review, off-season episode two, I guess. <clears throat> All right, so uh, I guess not necessarily a lot of news on the Ravens, but big news, I guess, kind of. Offensive coordinator, this is a press release. As you can see, it's from BaltimoreRavens.com. Press release that the Ravens put out saying Todd Munkin is offensive coordinator. Yay. He has NFL experience. Two years with Tampa Bay. About what? What is that? Six, seven years ago. And then Cleveland Browns. So that was what? Mayfield and Jackson's second year, I think. If I got my math right. Then he went to University of Georgia. That's right. The same college that won back-to-back -back national titles. He was their offensive coordinator. So, yeah, there is a certain hesitation, maybe, to be excited about hiring an offensive coordinator from a college team. It is one of the better, if not best, college teams in the past three years. So, it's not that bad of a signing, I don't think. At least at this point. He does have NFL experience. Like I said, with the Bucks and the Browns. Now, those offenses did have some weapons. Like, say... Odell Beckham with the Browns and Mike Evans with the Bucks, And I know each of those teams had a few other receivers that are good. I just can't remember them because it was so long ago. That and I don't want to sit here and make a 50 minute video. Let's go to another press release from the Ravens. T. Martin, quarterback's coach now. Willie Taggart also joins the staff. Where is the... Here it is. Willie Taggart will be the running back's coach. Another guy coming from college. Somewhere it said what else his experience was. I don't really remember. But I think the bigger... Or at least the one the Ravens will know the most is, uh, is uh, T. Martin. T. Martin being moved moved to quarterbacks coach. He was the wide receivers coach. Um, don't know exactly how I feel about that because I would say the Ravens wide receivers have been pretty bad. So, do I want their position coach to move the quarterback's coach? <sighs> I don't know. Hopefully he has a better track record as a quarterback's coach than wide receiver's coach. Not that all of it was his fault. As many people will note, the Ravens have not had that many good weapons at wide receiver. So, and even some of the weapons they've had, like Bateman or Marquise Brown, have dealt with some injuries that had them miss a considerable amount of time. Uh, this is just a news page. Let's go to this one. This is an article also on BaltimoreRavens.com written by Ryan Mink, BaltimoreRavens.com staff writer. This is Munkin and talking about type of offense he kind of likes to run. There has been hinting of maybe Odell Beckham joining the Ravens. I find where it actually said uh, to pull the point. 
some people may not like Beckham's personality, if you will. Monkening, Munkin, Munkin, Munkinen, Munkin. How do you say that? Munkin, right? Yeah, Munkin. Whew. I think I'm going to screw that up more often than not. He Beckham is a skilled position player. He's going to want the ball. If he's not getting the ball enough, he's going to be unhappy. And he's going to let you know that he's unhappy. Duh. I mean, that, that's obvious. I mean, he's at least at a time he was a big time playmaker. I think he's, you know, dealt with some injuries. He's kind of on the back end, if you will, of his career. Yeah, he, he, he wants the ball. That would, duh. Uh, somewhere, Munkin, it says, Munkin says he likes that. Yeah, right here, there's a quote about, you know, basketball players and baseball players, they all want the same thing. Opportunities to showcase their abilities. And Munkin's on board with that. God, where did where did that go? Well, I think I probably closed that out. He talked about what kind of offense he wanted to run. Oh, here we go. That this is where it is. Munkin with the Munkin signing. It would appear that the talk we've had in the past several years about the Ravens receivers being terrible or not being utilized enough being too injured and and whatnot and whatnot it would appear that this Munkin hiring is going to change that Munkin wants to use his wide receivers so you see right there open sets more space Using every blade of grass. It's kind of the idea with some of these. What? Do, wait, shit. What the hell am I trying to say? I've read too many articles. I got too many words in my head now. It's your big time playmakers. Like it's an, an Odell Beckham. The idea is you get them the ball in space and let them do their work. That's kind of part of Munkin's philosophy here. What kind of weapons will he get? Don't know. Hopefully they'll be a little better than the ones we currently have. Or at least the ones we do have on the roster will not get injured as much. That's... Seems like we've had that for the past two or three years now. All our big playmakers, Lamar Jackson, Bateman, Andrews has missed some time, I think. The running backs, we had both running backs down, Edwards and Dobbins. That's something that really needs to change. Another article written by Clifton Brown. Also, BaltimoreRavens.com staff writer. Six pillars to a good offense, according to Munkin. Don't turn it over. Be explosive. Touchdowns in the red zone. Good on third down. Don't use. Don't lose yards. Have an athletic quarterback that can make off-schedule plays. Somewhat of a cookie cutter response. So. I mean yes. We want this. We have been bad. In a few of these areas. Scoring in the red zone. Turning the ball over. Losing yards. Not good on third down. Yeah we. we eh. So it would sound. Like. Munkin was a good hire. 
things he wants to do are things we were bad at. So, hopefully, the offense looks a little better next year. Now on to the other stuff. If you've been keeping up, this, I'll call it a fiasco. Contract talks with Lamar Jackson. I mean, it's now a, a, a damn fiasco. Holy. I, it seems like each side is now putting out statements to make the other side look bad. Wow. Oh my God. Just part ways. Cut ties. Because it doesn't sound like you guys really like each other anymore. Oh well. It's for the it's for the big news that well, yeah, I guess you call it news. It came out oh, when did it come out? I don't know, a few days ago. Who cares when it actually came out? No one uh I don't even remember what show it is. And I don't really want to say it because I say what the name of the show is because I watched the clip and it kind of pissed me off. I don't know if I like the people on the show. But at the same time, I'm an asshole. So, take that for what it is. I'm sure they do lots of good work. It's just some of the things that they said on the show kind of rubbed me the wrong way. But Stephen A. Smith said he was contacted by somebody in... Lamar's camp. Those air, those air quotes were, you know, figurative, figurative, figuratively and literally. As in, Stephen A. Smith literally said that. So. And also figuratively because who the hell is Lamar's camp? Who is this person? Was it his mom? His momager? Was it Lamar Jackson? Was it his best friend? His sister, brother, cousin, uncle, aunt, nephew? His his camp, I guess. Okay. But according to this camp, Lamar has never asked for a fully guaranteed contract. Okay. However, and he was also not consulted on the Munkin hire. Good. Why should you be consulted on the Munkin hire? Why? Unless your name is Peyton Manning or Tom Brady or who are some of the other great quarterbacks that we've seen. Montana, maybe. Dan Marino. Unless you're one of them guys. Yeah, I'm not going to consult you. This is who I think is best for my team. And if you don't like it. You can get bent. In the words of Bart Simpson. Regardless of how good you are. And yes, Lamar Jackson has talent. He really does. He's nowhere near that level. He's nowhere near surefire, guaranteed, give him his gold jacket right now. He's not there. And I don't know. I mean, he could definitely absolutely get in the Hall of Fame one day. I, I don't know. We don't know yet. The only person you could probably say that with now is Mahomes. Maybe. Tough to say. The careers are kind of small. Small sample size. So, no, I don't have a problem with them not, with the Ravens not consulting 
Lamar Jackson on if he likes Todd Munkin for his offensive coordinator. Uh, you're not the boss on the team, Lamar. Sorry. You don't get to tell the Ravens who to hire as offensive coordinator. That, that don't make sense. And I guess he's hurt because John Harbaugh said in a press conference, yeah, Lamar will be involved. Okay. So apparently they called Lamar up, the Ravens did, and said, yeah, hey, Todd Munkin is going to be your offensive coordinator. That kind of sounds involved. I mean, depends on how you define the word involved. However. Then there were some other things said after they kind of we're done quoting Lamar's camp. Something that really pissed me off. Well, I guess I say I don't know that they were done quoting Lamar's camp. Because Stephen A. Smith, words that came out of his mouth, and yes, I don't know if he was speaking as himself or speaking as Lamar's camp. Said the Ravens do not have a number one tight end. Well, you got to answer this question right now, Stephen A. Smith. Is that you saying Mark Andrews ain't a number one tight end? Or is this Lamar's camp saying Mark Andrews ain't a number one tight end? Whoever the answer is, you stupid. Mark Andrews not a number one tight end? Is you crazy? Do you know what it means, number one tight end? Well, it means you're at least the the 10th best tight end in the league. And you are number one on a depth chart. By the technical definition, number one tight end means number one on a depth chart. But I think when, you know, when we say he's a, he's a number one tight end, top 10, top five in the league. Okay, well, who's better than Mark Andrews right now? Uh, maybe Kelsey. Of course, it's tough to say because he does have Patrick Mahomes throwing to him. So, oh, God, I want to, uh, the guy in San Francisco. Greg Tittle? Not Greg Tittle. Kittle. Kittle. I know he's really good. He's definitely a top five. I'm sure there's a few other ones in there. But Mark Andrews is definitely in the conversation for top five, top five tight end in this league. So whoever the hell is saying that the Ravens don't have a number one tight end is a damn moron and should never be listened to again. So is this Stephen A. Smith saying this? Or is this Lamar's camp? Go ahead. Yeah. All right. Next thing I didn't really like. Talking about the number, the numbers in the contract Lamar was offered. 133 million guaranteed. And that was, you know, supposedly the Ravens' best offer. Well, number one, there was a whole bunch of incentives in that deal. At least what I heard. Now, this whole situation is kind of turning into an he said, she said bullshit. But, however, there were supposedly incentives in that $133 million. On top, on top of that $133 million, things like number of games played. Showing up to practice and attending mini camps, you know, doing the job we paid you to do. Okay. Now, the way I understand it, if a lot of those conditions are met, that $133 million guaranteed goes way up, right? 
you attend such and such mini camp, you get such and such millions of dollars or, or whatever. Well, that turned into guarantee because you showed up. It's not guaranteed because you just signed your name on a piece of paper. Sorry. Sorry, man. You got to show up. You want to get paid, you got to show up. That means you got to come to practice. I don't, would, Yeah. You don't like it? Okay. Th then go away. <sighs> then some of the panelists were voiced their opinions and questioning the Ravens conduct uh no his durability wasn't a problem and yes I'm looking at notes again let's see how good a notes I, I've taken no his durability wasn't a problem before because he wasn't making close to 40 or 50 million dollars yeah like, if you're going to pay somebody 40 or $50 million a year to play quarterback, you better be durable because I'm not giving you 40 or $50 million that you're not going to show up or because you can't show up because you're injured. That's ridiculous. And I know it's a violent sport and people are going to get hurt. But there are other things that we can do instead of guaranteeing you 40 or $50 million. Not a problem when the Ravens traded up to get Lamar Jackson. Well, I guess that would depend on how you look at it because they made many trades that day. They drafted Hayden Hurst and Lamar Jackson in the first round. And they, they were both a little later in the first round as far as I remember. If I remember correctly, they had around the mid-teens and they traded back to round 20-ish, I think, to get Hurst. And with those extra picks that they got, they used them to jump back into the first round again and get Lamar Jackson. So... It depends on how you look at it if it's trading up. Because they were going to pick earlier. So instead of picking one pick around 15, they got two picks around mid-20s, I think. So no, it wasn't a problem. Why would it have been a problem? No way the kid was going to make 40 or $50 million. Yes. We are worried about money. Sorry. When the numbers get that big, yeah, we're worried about money. Because what happens when you guarantee your quarterback 40 or $50 million and he can't get on the field? Well, it's like you took 40 or $50 million, wiped your ass with it, and flushed it down the toilet. Because you're not getting anything out of it. No, it wasn't a problem when Lamar Jackson was winning games for him. Duh. Winning solves everything. Have you never seen pro sports? Have you talked about pro sports? Yeah. Winning solves all the problems. <laughs> right? Because it means things are going good. Everybody's happy. We're winning. <sighs> Not a problem when they built the offense around him. Well... If you're going to draft a quarterback and not build an offense around him, you're not going to win games. So, either you build the offense around him or you just be okay with losing. And yes, it wasn't a problem. And no, it wasn't a problem because they weren't paying Lamar Jackson 40 or $50 million a year so they could put people around him. Not that they did a really good job at it.
and I hate to break it to you, but Nick Foles and Joe Flacco, as good of quarterbacks as they were, and they weren't like great quarterbacks, because they weren't making 40 or $50 million, you could build a whole team. You had a better ability, because you had more money, to put pieces around them. Offensive line to protect your quarterback. Running backs to draw up linebackers so you have somebody to throw to in the middle of the field. Skill positions, guys. Like, oh, who who are Philly's tight ends? Well, um, Goddard and uh, God, I can't remember who the other guy was. They had a pair of good tight ends. You had to pay them too. I don't remember who their wide receivers were. But defense? For a while, Philly has had a good defense. They've, had, they've been pretty good with their front seven. You're not getting that for free. Same thing for the Ravens. You had Ray Lewis and you had Ed Reed on that team making lots of money. Yeah. It is very common. For a team to go to the Super Bowl with a quarterback on a rookie slash team friendly deal. Happens a lot. It really does. I don't, I don't know why you think that it doesn't happen. I don't know why you think the key to winning the Super Bowl is guaranteeing 40 or $50 million a year to a quarterback. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> this whole situation is just ridiculous. Ugh. Comment below. Do you think this whole Lamar Jackson contract is ridiculous? This whole controversy is ridiculous. What do you think about Todd Munkin as offensive coordinator? Man, I'm just shaking my head. Mm. Man, I, I don't know. Ooh, that clip, man. That clip of that show. Man. Whew. All right. I guess I got to say goodbye. I'm mumbling. And I've been... I feel like I've been staring at this camera too long. All right. Really going now. Be sure to like and subscribe. I am the Angry Rhino. Fly Ravens fly.